It's like a real submarine, but a lot smaller. What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now, you might have seen this submarine sitting in the back there uh, in my last video and probably wondered when I'm gonna make a video about it, if ever. Uh, well, today's the day because this is my 172nd scale USS Skipjack. Um, it's a model of an American nuclear submarine from the Cold War uh, made by a company called Mobius out there in the States. And this was a originally a static display model that I've converted uh, into a fully functional RC submarine. I believe the kit, uh, the actual plastic kit, uh, was released all the way back in 2012. And I got it actually when it was first released here uh, in my city. It's been sitting all these years uh, in my backlog uh, waiting to be completed. And um, I've only started to work on it, I think, in the fall of 2023. Um, the model was finished and completed uh, in, in, in now in the spring of 2024. And at the time of recording, um, it has undergone its maiden voyage and shakedown cruise. So um, just gonna do a bring the camera closer. Let's take a look at the model from the outside. And uh, later on, we're gonna see what goes on inside. All right, so here we have, I'm just gonna pan the camera around so you can get a better look. One thing I love about the Skipjack class is just how compact it looks because compared to something like a modern US Navy uh, nuclear submarine, for example, th this class of submarine was very, very stubby, uh, if, if I can say so. Um, it has a massive conning tower or sail, as you can see there, which gives it a very unique looking profile. Um, now, I, 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 when I'm, at the time of making this video, I believe this kit, you can still buy it um, on sites like eBay. I'm not sure if it's still in production, but uh, within the RC submarine community or the, ho the hobby, uh, it's quite a common kit that you see being converted uh, into RRC. All right, here we have the WTC that I designed and built for this sub. This is what I like to refer to as my spare parts build because Stuff like the Lexan tubing and the PVC pipes that I grew together to form the ballast tank were literally leftover parts from previous projects that I decided to throw together into a functional watertight cylinder. And it turned out quite uh, well. I'm quite happy with um, how this looks and works. Uh, we're gonna start back here because I, I love just showing uh, the propulsion system first. This is what's known again as a brushless in a wet system. Essentially, we have a brushless motor uh, that's commonly used uh, in something like an RRC airplane running perfectly fine underwater. Uh, this is what, a 750 kV motor, quite torquey and fast. Um, and one thing we have to keep in mind with these, this setup is that uh, the bearing that's inside, the bearings inside need to be lubricated quite regularly uh, to prevent rust from forming. Um, it's connected to a universal joint, uh, which is then connected to the drive shaft running through the tail cone there. Inside are also the bell cranks uh, responsible for controlling the, um, for connecting the linkages, which are connected to uh, two servos that are inside the WTC. Now, uh, in, back here is also, there's also uh, something called an APC2. Essentially, this is a uh, automatic pitch controller this particular unit was gifted to me by my friend and it's actually quite old. It, it might be my age or maybe older than me, uh, but as you can see, it's functioning perfectly fine um, connected to the rear dive planes there. As I move the, as I pitch up the hull up and down, you can see the, the uh, dive planes kind of reacting uh, to the change in pitch. Uh, the rudder itself is connected, uh, I believe on the right side, let's see, oh, there we go. Yeah, it's connected there. Okay, we have the rudders moving. And of course I have an override function where, where I can control the rear dive planes manually if the need ever arises. Uh, now moving towards the center, uh, this is probably using my, my favorite uh, kind of ballast system. This is called a uh, vented ballast tank. Essentially it uses a water pump. In this case, it's a gear, gear pump from uh, a uh, car's windshield washer system uh, hooked up uh, to the tank and hooked up to the other side electrically uh, via a set of uh, switches. These switches, as you can see, 
are connected to a little micro servo that's also pinching uh, the inlet hose to the pump. How this works is very, very simple because uh, when the servo moves one way, the pump turns one way. And when the servo moves the other way, the pump runs in reverse. Essentially, um, it lifts the servo horn, lifts the pinch, freeing water from uh, you know, flowing through the hose. And depending on the direction of the pump, it either fills up this water tank or empties it. Now, because as the name suggests, it's a vented system, uh, air has to escape somewhere, right? As water in enters here, you know, air either gets compressed uh, or it, it, uh, in this case, it, uh, it flows out of this vent tube there, uh, all the way into uh, the little snorkel that's sitting on top of the, um, the sail of the skipjack. Uh, so essentially, um, as water fills up, air escapes through the sail, and uh, the boat gets heavier, goes underwater, and when uh, the boat is surfacing, air gets drawn back through the snorkel into the hose and um, fills up the water tank as the pump is emptying the water out. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that because this is a vented system, uh, a portion of the snorkel always needs to be exposed above the surface of the water uh, when the submarine is not moving. Uh, once the submarine is uh, what we call the submerged trim with water sitting approximately where uh, the black uh, paint is there on the, on the snorkel, I can then you know, take the submarine deeper uh, using either rear dive planes or uh, the, um, the fair water planes that you see there. Uh, speaking of fair water planes, uh, this is one of the few subs that I have where I implemented a, uh, a bow dive plane uh, system where uh, you can see that there is a small blue micro servo there that's um, actuating a linkage uh, that I'm going to get to move back and forth. In the there we go. You can see the linkage moving and essentially there is a magnet sitting on this part of the linkage that connects to a little control rod that goes up to the um, top of the sail. So um, I'm going to Take this aside and show you uh, the linkage system that I got going on there uh, inside the upper hull. All right, here we have the underside of the upper hull. To the left there, we have the um, intake that runs up to the snorkel in the sail. And up front, we've got the bow plane or the fair water plane linkage uh, that I mentioned earlier. Essentially, it's basically a dual parallel bell crank system. As I move this back and forth, mimicking the servo there, you can see uh, there are the fair water planes uh, moving up and down. Now, I don't want this to be dangling as I'm moving the hull. So what I did was I installed a little magnet up front so that uh, this little linkage can just simply uh, be snapped into place and held into place when I'm transporting the upper hull, for example. I'm uh, going to give you a little close-up of the linkage. Uh, the, uh, over there is just basically a uh, stainless steel ball that's magnetic, and this just mates up with uh, the magnet on the um, bow end cap linkage that I showed you earlier. So in terms of main power, I have the main drive battery there uh, in black under the electronics tray. And it's basically this. This is a uh, you know, 7.2 volt nickel metal hydride RC car battery. You can find them anywhere. Uh, this one is 5,000 milliamp hours, gives me plenty of runtime. It's the same battery that I have for all my RC submarines and it works quite well. In terms of receiver, I have a 75 megahertz synthesized receiver running on five channels. Uh, I think it's made by a company called Novak RC, which no longer exists, which means that uh, this being one of the last uh, 75 megahertz receivers that I have in my inventory, I'll need to you know, switch to a different frequency or another kind of receiver uh, for future submarine builds. Now, coming back here, uh, one last word about the uh, brushless in the wet system. One thing I really love about having the motor on the outside is that if I ever decide to upgrade this motor uh, or swap it out with something more, uh, more torquey uh, or even less powerful in the future, all I need to do is to undo the screws uh, to the mounting plate and unhook uh, the uh, electrical connections down there. And you know, out, out goes the old motor and in goes uh, the new motor, uh, if I ever decide to uh, upgrade, that is. Uh, having the motor on the outside also means that the linkages 
for the rudder and rear dive planes do not need to go around the motor inside the cylinder, which means that the diameter of your cylinder can be reduced. So in this case, I'm using a 2.5 inch uh, piece of uh, Lexan tubing uh, to house all my electronics. 2.5 inch is a really nice size because it still gives me a lot of room to play around with the servos and put in other uh, electronic gizmos. System that works quite well. Uh, now, I'm going to put the upper hull back on and let's throw this submarine in the water and show, uh, show you uh, how it runs uh, in its natural element. So overall, I mean, this was a very, very fun project to work on. I didn't expect something to be made out of spare, spare parts to uh, perform so well under the, the water. Um, I mean, the size of the submarine kit uh, definitely helped too uh, in the ease of conversion. I mean, there's just so much space inside uh, for me to kind of experiment with different kinds of watertight cylinder configurations and different types of uh, ballast tanks. But I'm glad that I settled on the, um, the pump-based ballast that I'm so familiar with um, from my previous projects. Uh, now, fully trimmed, this boat is probably hands down uh, my best performing uh, RC submarine to date. I mean, you saw in, some, in the footage there that it, it just glides uh, under and over the, the waves. So uh, definitely something that I'm gonna take to the pond uh, on a fairly regular basis, that's for sure. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. It was very fun to make. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. As always, uh, so uh, stay tuned for more RC Submarine videos and I'll see you next time.